Africa has some of the most venomous snakes in the world. Think of the infamous black mamba, the stealthy puff adder and the beautiful boomslang. All of these snakes have a bite that will ruin your day. However, not all venoms are the same and the bites from these three different snakes that I just mentioned all have a different effect on humans. Stick around for a minute or two while I tell you about the main groups of snake venom found in African snake species and what their impact on humans are. You might learn something new and something useful if you ever find yourself in a snake bite situation. Why do snakes have venom? Well, snakes don't often get feeding opportunities, so they need to make sure that any chance at catching something does not go to loss. Therefore, the main function of snake venom is to overwhelm and subdue its prey, which could be birds, mammals, or even other snakes. Some people think that the primary function is to aid digestion of food. But that makes no sense to me, given that the majority of snakes don't have venom and they seem to digest their food just fine. The secondary function of snakes' venom is that it can also act as a defense against predators. And that is the focus of this video. The venom, which is basically modified saliva, is stored in the venom glands that are typically situated in the head just behind or below the eyes, often stretching into the neck area for some like the night adders quite some distance down into the body. Venom from these glands are injected into the prey or predator via hollow teeth that are either fixed like in cobras or that can swivel like those of vipers and adders. Some lesser advanced venomous species deliver their venom through grooved teeth rather than the hypodermic needle-like fangs and even lesser effective species simply chew their venom into their prey with mostly unmodified dentures. In Southern Africa, we may encounter four different types of venoms, though this is an oversimplification of the complexity of snake venoms, as any given highly venomous snake will have a concoction of different venoms and enzymes in the mix. However, the effect of these different venoms can be grouped into four main categories, namely neurotoxic, cytotoxic, hemotoxic, and finally myotoxic. Neurotoxic venom harms the brain and nervous system by blocking neurotransmissions, basically any messages from the brain to organs or muscles in the body and messages back to the brain are blocked by this type of venom. This leads to paralysis and difficulties in breathing and cardiac arrest. Neurotoxic venom typically does not cause much pain and victims often don't realize that they have been bitten until the symptoms start. This type of venom is the most deadly of all the types of venom. It is also the quickest acting and a serious envenomation can lead to life-threatening symptoms within mere minutes. Fortunately, victims that survive often recover fully and rapidly after the bite. A typical example of a snake with this type of venom is black mamba whose neurotoxic venom contains dendrotoxins that cause rapid paralysis in bite victims. Cytotoxic venom causes severe pain by impairing the tissues at a molecular level, leading to cell death. Well, that is saying it nicely. The reality is that these venoms basically dissolve cells and by implication also the prey's tissue and flesh. Bites from cytotoxic snakes are typically not life-threatening unless the resulting wounds are inadequately treated, but they can cause massive tissue damage and they may even lead to the loss of limbs or digits. The pain of these bites are excruciating and the recovery period is typically much longer than that for other types of envenomation. An example of a snake that possesses potent cytotoxic activity is puff adder. Hemotoxic venom disrupts blood clotting by either causing the blood to clot or instead disrupting the ability of the blood to clot. In Africa, some tree-dwelling snakes possess 
this type of venom and the anticoagulants therein causes severe bleeding. The venom of African hemotoxic snakes is fortunately slow acting and provides a long window of opportunity for treatment interventions. Make no mistake though, once symptoms start the situation can rapidly become severe. To compound matters the venom of these snakes are super concentrated and drop for drop this is the most deadly venom on the continent. So a small scratch from a fang should not be ignored. It may only take a micro drop to be fatal. This venom also does not cause pain or discomfort and bites from these snakes are often not regarded in serious light until the real symptoms start. Boomslang and vine snakes possess potent hematoxic venom and should be treated with great respect. Myotoxic venom works directly on muscles and it leads to severe and instant muscular paralysis. This is obviously not good as the heart is a muscle and the lungs need other muscles in the thorax to function. Myotoxic compounds are found in nearly all sea snake venoms and in southern Africa the yellow bellied sea snake has this type of venom. It is also highly concentrated requiring minuscule amounts to cause fatalities and one can make a case for this snake being the most venomous snake in Africa. So that is the four main types of snake venom. But one interesting thing remains and that is about how researchers determine the toxicity of venom. How do we know that Cape Cobras are more venomous than for instance puff adders? It is not like we can toss a few people into a room with cobras and then repeat with another group of people with puff adders. The way that researchers determine the estimated toxicity values is to inject surrogates with the venom and then monitor fatalities. The surrogates used for most snake venom studies are usually mice, being similar to humans in that they are warm blooded mammals. The amount at which the venom is lethal for 50% of the study population is then given as an LD50 number. Boomslang venom, at least in mice, kills half of all mice when administered at a concentration of 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of mice. In comparison, 10 times the amount of puff adder venom would be required to ensure the same outcome. So we can confidently say that boomslang trumps puff adders. The scary part is that researchers believe humans to be more sensitive to boomslang venom than mice are. So the true LD50 toxicity value of boomslang venom is likely to be in the vicinity of 0.03 milligrams per kilogram. And that beats even the yellow bellied sea snake. Boomslang is the true venom king of Africa. Now that you know more about the different venoms, we will zoom in on the most important groups of venomous snakes in Southern Africa, but that's for the next video, and rate these groups of snakes in terms of their medical significance. Till next time, go explore.